Good evening, this is Sarah the Break, and you're watching the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Al Mullah, Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Al Saleh, and a number of members of the two councils. The King was handed the yearly report of the two councils' second session of the fourth legislative term. His Majesty commended the efforts exerted by the Chairman and members of the two councils for the benefit of the Kingdom and its people. He emphasized the role of the legislative authority in reinforcing the parliamentary march and its contributions in developing the Kingdom. He noted that the important national achievements of the two councils and their role in adopting the causes of the Bahraini community, enhancing rules and legislations, and defending the country on the international level. His Majesty praised the content of the yearly report as it concluded achievements included achievements as well as uh, constructive ideas to enhance the legislative performance. He expressed his anticipation for the following session in order to make more achievements for the benefit of Bahrain and its people. He pointed out the privacy of the kingdom over hundreds of years present, represented in the community's ability to protect its national unity and respect its religious diversity. His Majesty stated that this ability to coexist peacefully did not emerge in one day. Rather, it stemmed from hundreds of years of civil and social construction. He affirmed the importance of maintaining those noble humanitarian traits. The king expressed his comfort and happiness because of Bahrain's religious freedom, where individuals get to exercise their religions without feeling alienated or discriminated against. He stressed not to allow foreign interference to divide the people of the kingdom, which is something Islam strongly denounces. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the security forces for maintaining safety and order of the people during Ashura. He also expressed thanks to Matsums and those who serve people during the season where he, where he commended their organization and efforts in maintaining civil peace. He discussed local issues with the audience and means of developing the institutional framework in order to achieve the desired outcome. He wished both councils success in bearing this national responsibility. The Shura Council's report included its activities for this session, the specialties of the council's office and its permanent committees, along with council discussions of draft laws, general budgets and their final accounts, and law proposals attached with a detailed schedule and, comp and comparative charts. The Representatives Council's report included achieved topics discussed by the Parliament, such as draft laws, decree laws, law proposals, other proposals, parliamentary questions addressed to ministers, as well as the Council's published uh, political statements, which included the Council's stance regarding local, regional and international matters. Speaker of the Res Representative Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King on the occasion of presenting him with the annual report of the second session of the fourth legislative term, affirming the Council's keenness to continue the march of achievements in cooperation with the government in order to serve the country and its people. He expressed honor in hearing the directives of His Majesty the King, affirming keenness to make further achievements, gains, implement and develop legislations, support the march of progress and enhance the principles of citizenship. He affirmed that the Representatives Council's full support to the reform project of His Majesty the King, which focuses on the democratic work, enhancing the principles of human rights in order to achieve further prosperity to the kingdom. 
Al Mullah affirmed the council's keenness to exert more efforts despite the challenges to make more gains and achievements that will reflect positively on the kingdom and its people. He also stressed the importance of collective efforts in implementing legislative and regulations that support parliamentary work, combat terrorism, enhance security and national unity to achieve further development on the local, regional and international levels. For his part, Shura Council Speaker Ali Saleh affirmed that the continuous care and follow-up of His Majesty the King motivates the Council to exert more efforts and implement more legislative and regulations required in the coming phase. The Shura Council expressed honor for meeting His Majesty the King and presenting him with the annual report on the Council's performance and achievements during the second session of the fourth legislative term. Al Saleh affirmed that meeting His Majesty and listening to his directives is an opportunity further to further improve of the council to reach the highest level aspired by the wise leadership and the people of Bahrain, especially under the challenges the kingdom faces on the regional and international levels. He affirmed that His Majesty is familiar with all the details related to legislative affairs and all the accomplishments made by the council, which reflects His Majesty's keenness to bolster the democratic march and provide all the facilities needed to reach the highest level of performance. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received today at Ghalibiya Palace the newly appointed Italian Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Domenico Bilato. He welcomed the newly appointed Ambassador to the Kingdom and wished him every success in his new diplomatic role. The Crown Prince highlighted that the steady growth of bilateral relations between Bahrain and Italy has helped to facilitate significant business and commercial opportunities that directly support ongoing efforts to achieve shared strategic goals and interests. His Royal Highness also highlighted that the exchange of bilateral visits has been an important contributor to delivering official agreements between the two countries. For his part, the Italian ambassador expressed his pleasure at the opportunity to meet the Crown Prince and emphasized his commitment to exploring ways in which collaboration between Bahrain and Italy can be expanded. Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa participated in the fifth joint strategic ministerial meeting for dialogue held in Riyadh along with the GCC foreign ministers and Turkish foreign minister Mouloud Oglu in the presence of Turkish Minister of Economy Nihat Zeybekti. The meeting reviewed the GCC-Turkish relations and means of enhancing relations and joint cooperation in all fields according to the joint action plan between the two sides. The two sides exchanged views regarding political affairs and the security situation in the region as well as means to push international efforts to eliminate terrorism. The foreign ministers expressed in their final statement their com comfort regarding the fifth term of the strategic dialogue. They have agreed to extend the current work plan between the GCC and Turkey to the end of 2018 and to enhance it in accordance with the development of joint cooperation. The ministers directed the work team is to hold meetings about commerce and investment, agriculture and food security, transportation and telecommunication, energy, the environment, tourism, health, culture and education, as well as intensifying the efforts in order to implement the plans of joint work and cooperation between the GCC and Turkey. The ministers welcomed the second Turkish Gulf Investment and Business Forum, which will be held from the 1st to the 2nd of November 2016 at, in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The forum will be organized by the Union of Chambers of the GCC in cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Bahrain and the Commodity Exchange Union Chambers in Turkey. They agreed to hold the third meeting of the Commerce and Industry team during the 2017 in Turkey. They stressed their desire to establish a free trade zone between both sides as soon as possible. Turkey and the GCC have congratulated the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the successful hosting of this year's Hajj season. They expressed their appreciation for the efforts and facilities provided by the government of the custodian of the two holy mosques. They commended all attempts to uh, politicize uh, the sacred religious season. The GCC uh, confirmed its support of the Turkey against the failed 15th of July coup under the leadership of Turkish uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. They wished uh, the Turkish people prosperity and progress. The ministers uh, condemned uh, the attack on the uh, civil Emirati ship Swift near the Strait of Bab al-Mandib. 
They considered it a terrorist attack that threatens international navigation in that area and restrains humanitarian aid from reaching Yemen. They expressed their support for the Iraqi government's efforts in maintaining safety and security. They also expressed their worry regarding the sectarianism militias that have committed vindictive attacks, mass slaughters and torture, as well as their constant violation of human rights against the locals in the freed area of Mosul operation, which would lead to sectarian conflicts. They rejected the use of Iraqi soil as a haven for terrorist groups to execute terrorist attacks. The ministers confirmed calling the Islamic Republic of Iran not to interfere with the region's internal affairs and that all relations should be based on the Charter of the United Nations International Law, respect of sovereignty, not to use or threat with power, resolve issues with peace and respond to the United Arab Emirates' endeavor to resolve the three island conflict, whether through negotiations or resolving to the International Justice Court. They confirmed their commitment to maintaining Syrian and Yemeni unity, independence and regional safety. They urged the need to come up with a peaceful agreement that would lead to the establishment of a united and sovereign Palestine based on the Arab Peace Initiative. Minister of Education Dr. Majid bin Ali al naimi received today Board of Directors Chairman of the Geneva Center for Human Rights Advancement, Dr. Hanif Hassan Al-Qasim. The meeting was also attended by Executive Director Ambassador Idris Al-Jazairi and Board Member Dr. Mohammed Al-Shamsi. The audience was briefed on the Citizenship and Human Rights Promotion Schools Promoting Schools project that is implemented by the Ministry of Education, aiming at transforming schools to places of tolerance, coexistence and dialogues to follow Arab, Islamic and international values and reflect the authentic Bahraini spirit. The meeting also discussed means of enhancing cooperation between the ministry and the Geneva Center regarding boosting values of citizenship and human rights. Dr. Naimi asserted that this educational project comes within the ministry's efforts to reinforce citizenship and human rights principles that were launched under the wise leadership of His Majesty the King. The ministry has developed curricula of all levels for citizenship education based on using expertise from the UNESCO Education Bureau in Geneva to spread the culture of peace, tolerance and coexistence inside schools. Then the delegation visited one of the schools that implemented the project. The delegation praised the Bahraini educational project as a pioneer nearing one. Chief of Public Security Major General Tariq Al Hassan today chaired the meeting of Supreme Committee of the Arabian Gulf Security One exercise that will be held in Bahrain by the end of October. In the presence of heads of GCC delegations that will participate in the event, the chief welcomed the attendees and expressed thanks and appreciation to the committee members for their attendance and follow-up. He said that the exercise promotes a long journey of regional security coordination and cooperation and as part of the implementation of the GCC security agreement. He said that the exercises phases were designed according to the directives of interior ministers to enhance GCC joint security capabilities, especially counterterrorism efforts. He said that the concerned teams and panels have taken major steps in organizing the event. He said that a plan was designed to achieve the utmost benefit for the exercise through exchanging of expertise, joint training and workshops that will take place in the sideline of the event. The chief, the chief visited earlier the event site and was briefed on the preparations while directing to finalize all requirements to ensure the success of the exercise. In line with the Council of Representatives' efforts to enhance cooperation with the various agencies and countries, the Council held two meetings today, one with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, the UNHCR, in the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC countries, and the other with the Federal Parliament of Germany. More in this report. A delegation from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in the Gulf Cooperation Council countries is currently in the Kingdom for meetings with the Council of Representatives in line with the directives of Representative Speaker Ahmed Al Mullah to expand cooperation and consultations with various entities. The meeting has reviewed issues of common concern in regards to security situation and refugees affairs in addition to reviewing protection for refugees in the international law and Islamic Sharia and highlighting Bahrain's role in this regard.
it helps us to understand each others uh, it helps us to improve uh, the um, the legal uh, knowledge uh, in relation to refugees and it helps us to build the um, to build a bridge between uh, Euro United uh, Nations, uh, the High Commission for United Nations for Refugees, and uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain. Again, it helps us to know more about uh, the Bahraini Kingdom, and it is a positive role in relation to support refugees in the Arab world and other parts in the world. The Representatives Council also held a meeting with a delegation from the Federal Parliament of Germany to bolster bilateral relations and reinforce joint cooperation in the parliamentarian field. This is a very important meeting because we all stand against the biggest threat which is terrorism. We are pleased to see Bahrain's democratic experience going on the right track and we in Germany fully support it. We look forward to continue such meetings in Berlin in order to expand cooperations between us. The Representative Council continues its role in not only serving the needs of the people but also the best interests of the country in promoting its high status in the world. A host of Bahraini companies in house legal teams, individual Bahraini lawyers have been recognized on this year's prestigious legal 500 GC power lists. Daniel Deporto met with some of the honorees from Bahrain's Severn Investment Fund, Mumtala Kat Holding, to bring us this report. The annual Middle East Legal 500 GC power list recognizes the top 100 in house legal teams and general counsels in the region. On the recently released list for 2016, 11 Bahraini companies and their legal heads have been honoured, including Arcapita, Alba, Arab Banking Corporation, Bahrain Airport Company, Tatwir Petroleum, First Energy Bank, GFH, Ithmar Bank, Gulf Aluminium Rolling Mill, Batelco, and Bahrain's sovereign investment fund, Mumtalakat Holding Company. Both as an individual and as a team, it actually um, translates into an accolade for your organization and for the country that you represent, especially when you're talking about um, a, a company that represents the government of Bahrain. Um, for Mumtalakat, it just basically highlights uh, we can't do what we do without the support of executive management and our board of directors. And it is through that support that we are able to strive for excellence. Taking 11 out of 100 slots for the entire Middle East region is a huge achievement for the small nation of Bahrain, which is perennially well represented on the power list, demonstrating the high level of professionalism which can be expected while conducting business here. When you look at it both regionally and internationally and you see such a huge representation, um, this basically represents the fact that we are professionals, we are experts in our field, we are recognised as uh, you know, as, as being uh, of that stature um, in the international community. Um, I've had uh, times where we've ended a transaction and I've had international uh, partners of, of law firms come up and uh, basically congratulate the team on the level of expertise and professionalism, the way they've carried themselves out. So this shows the fact that Bahraini lawyers um, are not only leaders within the region, but they're actually on par with international legal community. The acknowledgement of Amtalakat's all-woman legal team holds extra significance this year, as the Supreme Council for Women has dedicated 2016 to celebrating women in the legal and judicial fields. Mumtalakat in itself is uh, a company that comprises, uh, its workforce comprises of 46% of, uh, of uh, females. Um, the uh, both uh, executive management and uh, management itself is 50% females and I think for a, a department which is mostly females, actually right now it's all females uh, and they're all Bahrainis as well. Um, I think Again, this is something that highlights the achievements of uh, female lawyers in Bahrain. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The joint business meeting of the GCC's Tourism and Culture Ministers and the third session meeting of the GCC's Ministers of Tourism was held in the Secretariat General of the Gulf Cooperation Council in the past two days. The meetings discussed and endorsed the GCC Comprehensive Joint Touristic Vision presented by the Board of the Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage. A team of GCC experts were assigned to commence the plan. The President and Chairman of the Board of the Saudi Commission for Tourism and National 
نيشنال هيرتج ذا اس سي تي اتش بن سلطان بن سلمان بن عبد العزيز ال سعود ستيتد ذات ذا كينجدم اوف بحرين از ا رول موديل ان بوث ذا كالتشرال اند توريزم فيلدز هي كومندد ذا ميرجينج اوف كالتشر اند توريزم ثرو بحرين's كالتشرال اثورتي ريستوريشن اوف انشنت سايتس اند بريزيرفينج ذا ريجنز هيستوري هي بوينتد اوت ذات ذس انديفر رينفورسز ا هيومن سيفيلايزيشنز اند كرييتس ا توريستيك اتراكشن اون ويتش ذا كونتريز اكونومي وود ستاند For his part, the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Tourism, Zaido Zayani, confirmed that Bahrain continues to march forward in order to achieve its strategic goals, concerns with tourism, as well as reinforce the touristic features of the kingdom in the light of the growth of tourism and the increase of the number of visitors of Bahrain. The President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, confirmed her support of Prince Sultan Al Saud's endeavors, pointing out that today's economy is concerned with the essence of communities. represented by their heritage, culture and history. She added that the qualifications and assets the GCC poses enables it to become an exceptional example that could create a solid future for its countries as well as maintain their heritage and authenticity.